What is up everyone? Welcome back to the Amazing Dinosaurs channel. Today we're checking out a vintage collection of Jurassic Park figures. And I've also got some of the 30th anniversary special Jurassic Park figures that just came out as well. Let's start with some of these biggest dinosaurs. Here, I believe, is a custom colored T-Rex. This is the bull T-Rex, which can actually swallow smaller dinosaurs all the way to its stomach compartment right down there. And let's compare that with the original painting of the Bull T-Rex here. This is JP28. It's got the yellow and green coloring with the black stripes on top. And of course, this one can eat smaller dinosaurs too. Up next is another T-Rex figure. This one is JP29. This figure also has the real feel skin over most of its body. The only hard plastic parts are its arms and its legs. Next up is another giant T-Rex figure. This is the red version, and this looks to be actually the old version of this new one that we'll check out right after this. It's got the real feel skin all over its body. It has some pretty cool coloring with the dark red and the black stripes and spots. And when you squeeze on its stomach, it can open and close its mouth, or at least it used to be able to. So now let's compare that with the new Jurassic Park electronic real field Tyrannosaurus Rex. And here it is, the new version of the Jurassic Park T-Rex. Let's go ahead and take out this tag to hear the sound effects. Now this figure also has the real feel skin, although it is a little bit less rubbery than the old vintage version but you can see that it still is pretty flexible. And of course its tail is also the real feel texture too. That's pretty cool. Those are some epic roaring sound effects. Let's dive back into the bin now. I've got some of the classic eggs that have the baby dinosaurs in it. So let's see what's in this one. All right, this one is JP58, which I think is maybe a Velociraptor baby or a T-Rex. I actually can't tell. Next up, I've got the Stegosaurus figure in the back here with the huge battle damage on its side. This is JP24 and also has some real feel skin too. And also an interesting feature with this figure is that you can move this spine to wiggle its tail. Here is the Utah Raptor. This Raptor is quite a lot larger than many of my other Velociraptor figures. It is JP22, and it features a chomping movement when you press down on its tail. Next here is a winged dinosaur. This one is pretty old and worn. I believe it is a Pteranodon. It has a spring-loaded mouth, and its wings are actually a soft fabric instead of a rubber or anything like that. And there's a button on its back so that you can flap its wings. Here's a decent sized dinosaur. This is the Pachycephalosaurus figure. This figure is wearing this backpack type thing. It's probably held some gadgets or something like that. You can see that there's a little bit of skin that you can open up right here. That's actually battle damage. And this figure's head is actually spring loaded. So it'll launch its head forwards. But unfortunately it's broken so it doesn't work the right way anymore. Why don't we go ahead and grab another one of the new collector's items. This is the Jurassic Park 30th anniversary nano scene. Let's go ahead and open it up. And here we go. This is a cool little miniature scene. You can see that there's two of the Jurassic Park cars here. Got the Jeep and then the classic car. And you can have them drive up to the Jurassic Park gates where the gates can open up. And on the other side are some Velociraptors waiting. And you can even see some T-Rex footprints too. This is pretty cool. I'm actually going to go ahead and put this up on my display shelf. All right, back to the bin. I've got a giant Triceratops figure. This one has the real feel skin as well. You can see the giant battle damage right on its shoulder right there. And just like with the T-Rex that we saw earlier, you can press its stomach to move its head. Back here, I think this is another Velociraptor figure. This is from Jurassic Park 3. And this figure has the dark brown skin with a light underbelly and some interesting red coloring along the top. Here is another real field dinosaur. This one is a juvenile T-Rex. It is JP06. It also has the massive battle damage on its side. And this specific figure I feel like is a lot more squishy than even some of the other ones. 
Up next is a Triceratops figure. This is JP44. It has the camo green coloring with the green blue coloring along the top and a roaring action when you move its leg. This next dinosaur looks pretty similar, but I think it's actually called a Chasmoceratops. This is JP21, and I think it might even have a larger frill compared to the Triceratops. And it's even got sound effects too. Up next is an old Spinosaurus figure. This one is pretty bright. It is JP39 and is pretty small compared to a lot of the newer Spinosaurus figures. And check that out, when you move its arm, you can also open and close its mouth too. This next one I think is another Velociraptor figure. This one has striping all over its body. It is JP18. And I don't think it works too well anymore sadly, but you can move the leg and it would move its neck up and down when it used to work. This Jurassic Park figure is the Allosaurus figure, and this one has some body parts that you can take off to reveal the battle damage underneath. You can also remove part of its chest and even the rib cage underneath, and also a part of its tail. That's pretty cool. I don't think many of the new Jurassic World figures have this much battle damage that you can reveal. Here is the Parasaurolophus figure. This is JP19, and it has a single button on its back for the running action. I've got another Jurassic Park egg here, so let's see what dinosaur is inside. All right, it is the baby Triceratops figure, and it is JP57. Look at those green marbled eyes. Why don't we go ahead and check out this other new collector's item too. This is the Hammond Collection, Dr. Alan Grant and Velociraptor pack. Let's go ahead and take this off, and there they are. Here is Dr. Alan Grant. He's got the plaid shirt, and you can see that there is a camera pack in there, as well as a green backpack. So he can wear the green backpack and inside the camera case are the two hidden Velociraptor eggs. If you remember that from Jurassic Park 3. And let's check out the Velociraptor figure from the pack. Like all the Hammond Collection figures, it is super adjustable so you can bend all of its limbs and it has some pretty cool coloring with the white and the brown striping all over its body. Here is the Velociraptorix figure. This is JP53. This dinosaur is a pretty exotic looking one. It's got these spikes all over its head and on its back, as well as these wing-like things on its arms. This is a hybrid dinosaur, so it's a Velociraptor mixed with something else that I actually don't know. Here is the Compstagnathus dinosaur. This is a super bright and wildly colored dinosaur. It's got these spines running along its Back, kind of like a stegosaurus, but it stands on two legs and it's got this crazy thing that it shoots out of its mouth. I don't know if that's its tongue or what that is. And another crazy colored dinosaur from Jurassic Park is the Amargo Spinus. It's got the bright red all over its body. This is JP58, and when you move its leg, you can actually activate its spines on its back, on its neck, and you can open its mouth too. Over here, I've got two twin Baryonyx figures. They've got slightly different coloring, but they are identical in size and shape. This first one has the yellow coloring with the dark brown spots. And this second one is dark brown all over and has some bright orange stripes on its back. Here I've got another hybrid crazy looking dinosaur. This is JP48 and I actually can't remember what the specific species of this figure is but boy, is it bright and crazy looking. Here is a Dilophosaurus figure without the frills. This is JP02, so this one is a really early figure. And it's quite small, but it still has the real feel skin and some pretty interesting color. And up next are a few classic Velociraptor figures. This first one is the older figure. It is JP06, and it has the dark red-orange coloring and a jaw-chomping action. And this second figure is JP10. It does not have the jaw chomping action and it has some totally different coloring. And here I've got a juvenile T-Rex figure from Jurassic Park. This is JP42 and this baby T-Rex actually features a broken leg. So you can see right there that is actually a bendable limb. So this originally came with a bandage or something like that that you put over the leg. And as an extra bonus, I've got some really old Jurassic World figures. These are some of the first figures that came out for the new Jurassic World series. 
size. This first one is a brown Velociraptor with the gray striping on top. Here's a light tan Velociraptor. This one actually has a battle damage button on its side. I guess it doesn't work anymore, sadly. And on this figure, you can use the tail to move the arms back and forth as if it's running. There's also this super old Ceratosaurus figure. It also has the battle damage button on its side. Plus, of course, when you move the tail, you can chomp its jaw. I've got two more super brightly colored dinosaurs. This first one is an Allosaurus figure with the bright yellow and bright red. It's got a little bit of battle damage on its side and you can use the tail to move the head around and open and close its mouth. And finally is a Triceratops Stegosaurus hybrid. You can see those golden spines running along its back from the Stegosaurus. And of course, you've got these Triceratops horns in the front, plus a whole lot more on this figure. gigantic figure is called the Ruthless Rampage Allosaurus. This Allosaurus looks quite a bit different compared to the older Allosaurus figures that Jurassic World made. Still has some pretty similar coloring with the brown and the blue, but it's got some awesome new features. First off is its evolution feature that springs up these spikes on its back. That's pretty cool, so it like sticks up when it's in battle mode. Plus this figure has a dial on its back that actually controls the head. That's pretty interesting. I haven't seen another Jurassic World figure from older series that have this really cool attack feature. And I really love the new teeth that they're coming out with. These look a whole lot scarier. Next up is this crazy looking dinosaur from the Epic Evolution Wild Roar series. It's called the Ecrixinatosaurus. And as you can see on this little icon on the package that this dinosaur's environment looks to be like the mountains, maybe some snowy areas too. Very cool. So this is a medium sized figure. It kind of reminds me of a Scorpio Venator dinosaur figure. It's got some pretty cool camouflage type coloring. It's like this stone gray coloring with some lighter stripes along its back. It's got a ton of horns on its head, including two horns above its eyes. That's kind of like a Carnotaurus figure. And now let's pull the tab out and let's see what kind of sound effects and attack features it has. Just like the last figure, I can see there's a dial on its back that'll control the attack feature so let's see what it does. That's pretty cool. So you can keep spinning the dial and it'll keep going through the different roar sound effects and the different attacks too. That is very cool. And once again, I love the new teeth on here. It's not a hard plastic. You can see that it's actually pretty bendable. And of course on this figure, you can move the tiny front arms and the legs, and you can twist the tail too. Next up from the Epic Evolution Collection is the Poposaurus figure. And the environment of this dinosaur looks to be more like a river or stream area. You can see some mountains in the background. Now this is a much smaller figure compared to the two ones that we just saw. It's got some pretty cool coloring. It's like a gray blue over its, most of its body. It's got some orange brown on its tail, the lighter underbelly, and then that same orange brown right along its face. And it looks like this figure doesn't have any attack features or evolution features, but you can pose the neck, the jaw, the arms, the legs, and you can twist the tail too. Next up from Epic Evolution is the Danger Pack. Avaceratops, or it might be pronounced Avaceratops, I'm not quite sure, but let's look at that environment up here. This one looks like it's up in the mountains as well, possibly some snow. This figure has some pretty realistic coloring too. It has a stone gray coloring, it's almost like a brown color, has some lighter detailing along the top, and then the light face. It looks pretty similar to a Triceratops, but you'll notice that it only has two horns, on the front of its head instead of three. And there is no attack feature or sound effects for this figure, which is a bummer, but you can move the head up and down manually, as well as move all the legs, and you can twist the tail too. Here is the Epic Evolution Danger Pack, 
Plesiosaurus. Now I have a few other Plesiosauruses in my collection, so it'd be really cool to check this one out and add it. And looking at the environment icon, it looks like this one is part of a stream or water area, which makes sense because this is an aquatic dinosaur. Now this is a smaller figure and it has different coloring compared to the other Plesiosaurus figures that I have. It's got a dark color along the top of its body, probably so that it can camouflage along the bottom of the river or the ocean, and its underbelly is a lighter color. And it looks like the only big color on this figure is on its face, where it's got this dark red coloring. Overall, this is pretty cool. There is no attack feature on it, which once again is kind of a bummer, but you can adjust the jaw manually. You can adjust the neck, the fins, and I think you can move the tail too. Here's another one from the Epic Evolution Collection, and this one is actually a set of two dinosaurs. This one is called the Eoraptor, and this one is called the Stegoros. And once again, looking at that icon, it looks like these dinosaurs are from a jungle area. Let's first check out the Eoraptor. Now this raptor is a lot smaller than many of my other older raptor figures, but it's got some pretty cool coloring with this green along its back and on its legs, and then this bright red along its arms, its neck, and its head. And not only that, but different compared to other raptors, it's got these spikes running along the back of its head. And because this figure is quite small, there's no attack features or sound effects, but you can open the jaw, you can move the arms, the legs, and the tail too. And here is the Stegoros figure. And this is pretty interesting. It's got a huge tail, which is kind of like an Ankylosaurus. And it looks like it has quite a bit of armor along its back. You can see these spikes running from its head all the way to its tail. And it looks like it walks on all four legs and it's got this dark green coloring but it's got this bright green striping running from its back to its head. And on this figure, you can't open and close the jaw, but you can only move the legs and the tail. This next figure is actually from the Dino Tracker series, and I believe it's pronounced the Zuanhanosaurus. And by this icon on the packaging, it looks like this dino's environment is the mountains. This figure looks pretty similar to a raptor in some ways. It's a smaller figure, it stands on its back legs. And I like the coloring too. It's got this stone gray coloring and then the feathering. You can see all that feather texturing. That's a pretty cool brown color and it's on its arms as well. And that goes all the way up to its head where it's got that gray again and then this dark reflective black coloring. And it looks like on this figure there is no attack feature, but you can still manually open and close the jaw move the neck around, move the arms, the legs, and the tail too. And here I've got the new Dino Trackers Pyroraptor figure from the Danger Pack series. And according to the icon up here, it looks like this dinosaur is in the jungle environment. And the coloring on this figure is really cool. I have quite a few other Pyroraptors from older series, but I have none that have this dark blue coloring and then this super bright yellow on the legs and on the underbelly. And what's interesting is that its face is still a dark black color with that white accenting. You can see it's got some feathering on its arms, on its back here, and of course on the top of its head. I think it's a bummer that they didn't color those feathers differently though. And just like the other figures, you can open and close the jaw manually, move the head, the arms, the legs, and the tail. Now let's check out the rest of the figures in this bin. I'm sure you've noticed this one already. This is the new super colossal Endoraptor figure. It's got the classic black over its whole body with the gold stripe running down the side. And this super colossal figure has some of my favorite teeth out of any of the super colossal dinosaurs. In the back here, I've got the Dino Trackers Indominus Rex figure. This comes in the classic gray coloring over its entire body. And you can use the tail to control the head back and forth and a button on its tail to operate the jaw. And it's got a glowing green light in its neck. It's kind of hard to see here. This is the Dino Trackers Tyrannosaurus Rex figure in a really cool light tan coloring with the yellow and the black striping along the top. It comes with this cool little headpiece. You can even see its eye through it. And it has a really cool attack feature when you press the button on its back. Check out that jaw snapping action. 
Here's the new Jurassic Park 93 Real Field Tyrannosaurus Rex. It looks very similar to the classic T-Rex figure that they made a super long time ago. I really love this dark red coloring with the spots and the lighter underbelly. And this T-Rex can actually be fed smaller dinosaurs. For example, why don't we feed it this little dinosaur here? And then you can retrieve the dinosaur in its stomach compartment right in here. There we go, just like that. Next up is the Dino Tracker's Bista Heversorf. And this dinosaur looks quite crazy. Check out these huge spines on its back. And you can actually move these spikes by pressing this button right up here. Check that out. In addition to that, it's got another button over here that activates the attack feature. Next up is an aquatic dinosaur called the Elasmosaurus. It looks kind of like the Plesiosaurus figure that we saw earlier, because it's got the four fins, the long body, the super long neck, and then the small head. And this figure has two buttons on its back. Each of them control the neck. One goes side to side, and the other goes up and down. This is the Sino Tyrannus figure from the Dino Tracker series. I love the coloring on this with the dark green, the light green, and then the bright red. And this figure has two action buttons. The first activates the jaw chomping action, and the second button activates the tail swinging action. This is the gigantic Tracker's Stegosaurus figure. It's got some really cool, intricate coloring over its body. It's got the huge Dino Tracker backpack, and it has two buttons on its back. The first button is hidden right here, and that swings the tail up and down, so you can get some stabbing action with those huge spikes. And the other button on the other side here activates the tail to swing side to side. This crazy looking figure is called the Diabloceratops. It comes in the really cool dark red and the brown underbelly, which is pretty unusual. It's got these four massive horns on the front of its face and actually some smaller horns running out behind its face. And it's got an attack feature right here that when you press that, it swings its head side to side. Here is the Mighty Irritator figure with some really crazy coloring with the dark brown in the back, the light brown in the middle of its body, and some bright green along its back, its neck, and its head. And this figure has an action feature on its back as well to activate the jaw chopping action. Next up is the Eo Carcaria figure. This dino figure has quite a bit brighter coloring compared to many of the other ones with this bright green blue in the back and then the dark blue on its front with the bright red on its head. And it's got that same action button on its back to activate the jaw chomping action. This next figure is from the Raptor family. It is called the Orco Raptor. It's got the black with the white striping along its tail and the dark green along its body and on the top of its head. It's got some pretty massive front arms too and this action button on its back for the jaw chomping. Next up is the Regala Ceratops figure. It has this amazing bright yellow coloring with some purple detailing, some green along its back, and that same green along its face too. It's got the three horns on its head, similar to a Triceratops, but it also has this really cool looking frill that's quite a bit different compared to a Triceratops frill. And of course it has an action button on its back for some roaring sound effects. Next up is the Dryptosaurus figure. This one has some pretty dark coloring. It's a very dark brown along most of its body, complemented by this gray-green coloring running along its arms to its tail. And check out how many spikes this figure has all over its tail, all over its back, and especially along the top of its head. Plus, there is an action button on its back for that jaw-chomping action. Next up, I've got the Hammond Collection Triceratops figure. It has the classic brown coloring with some cool texturing and detailing over its body. It's got the three horns on its face, similar to the Regaliceratops. But as I pointed out, you'll see that the frill is quite a bit different. This smaller dinosaur is called the Scudosaurus, and this one is super bright. Check out that orange coloring with the black spots on its back. Its two front legs are white, which is an interesting detail and it's got tons of horns coming out the bottom side of its face. Most dinosaurs have horns on the top of their head, but not this one. And here is an Atrociraptor figure with the dark green coloring along its back and then the bright green yellow coloring along its front. Plus what's really cool is that although this figure is really small, it does have an attack feature. So check that out. You can have a chomping action with this one.
The first and biggest of this collection is this Jurassic Park T-Rex. I believe this is a bull T-Rex, as it was called. It is the JP28. It has very unique coloring. I don't have another T-Rex that has this type of coloring on it. It's really cool. Next up from Jurassic Park, we've got the really bright and colorful Compstignathus. This is a super crazy looking dinosaur, plus it's got a unique feature that when you press on this orange thing, it sticks this, I think it's its tongue out of its mouth. That is super crazy looking. And then you can retract it just like that. <laughs> Next, also from Jurassic Park, is another giant T-Rex figure with the rubber body and the plastic legs and arms. This figure is getting really old, so you can see the paint starting to wear off. Plus, it's made of rubber, so it just doesn't hold up the time as well. But it still looks really cool, and you can use the tail to control the head. Here's another big dinosaur, but this one is a vintage Jurassic World figure. So it's a bit different. It's got a mostly plastic body, but it has a rubber neck and head, and you can use the arm to open and close the jaw. Really cool sound effects. The next vintage figure is this giant Utah Raptor figure from Jurassic Park. Definitely a lot bigger than a lot of my other Raptor figures, and it has some special features too. When you press down underneath its tail, it dips its head down in a chomping action. This figure is a vintage Jurassic World figure, and it's actually a pretty special one because it is a hybrid dinosaur. It looks like a T-Rex, but then you can press this button on its back to open up the spines and reveal them. That's really cool. Right over here is a vintage Jurassic Park Allosaurus figure. This figure is actually a bit smaller than a lot of my other Jurassic World Allosaurus figures, but the cool part about this figure is it has battle damage that you can take off completely. And you can even do it on its leg and its tail too. This is quite a bit different from the new Allosauruses that Jurassic World is releasing now. Right down here, we've got a huge Triceratops figure. This is from Jurassic Park. It's got the battle damage on the side. I think there used to be a piece that fit in there, but I don't have it anymore, sadly. But it's got the camouflage green coloring all over its body, and you can squeeze the stomach to lift up the head. Here is a vintage Jurassic World Ankylosaurus figure. I believe the figure actually has an additional shell. Here we go. You can put it right on top of the dinosaur for additional armor. This is a special edition Ankylosaurus figure. It's really cool. <laughs> Up next is another old Jurassic Park figure. I believe this one is a adolescent T-Rex. It looks quite a bit younger than a lot of the other big T-Rexes I have, so I think it's a younger version of a T-Rex. But its body's all rubber aside from its legs and its arms, and it does not have any special features, sadly. <laughs> Here's another really unique looking dinosaur from Jurassic Park. This is the Velociraptorix. It's got a body similar to a Velociraptor, but it's got these feathered wing-like things on its arms as well as on its back. And check out that super long snout with all those teeth. And you can actually move its arms and its head by moving its leg back and forth. Right over here is a smaller figure. This is a Jurassic World Pachycephalosaurus figure. It's got the black striping on the top and the yellow body and a little bit of body damage on the side. But for how old this figure is, it still has a pretty cool function where you can wiggle its head, you can move its head up and down in that head butting action too. Here's another T-Rex figure from Jurassic World. This one is custom colored though. It's got the red and the black coloring with the green underbelly. This figure is actually identical to the hybrid T-Rex with the spikes coming out of its back that we saw earlier. Here's another old Jurassic World figure. This is another Ankylosaurus, but this is the normal version. So we saw that super bright blue and green Ankylosaurus. This is the normal version, which is brown and does not have the additional shell covering on top. All right, I've also got a few vintage human figures in here too from Jurassic Park. I believe that this is the parachute edition of Dr. Ian Malcolm. <laughs> Looks like he's got the full harnessing system on for jumping out of a plane in a parachute. Next up, we got another old Indominus Rex figure. This is a little tiny one. I believe this one was a Bite and Thrasher's. It was called something like that. But you can use its tail to move its head around and open and close its jaw. 
Over here is another old Jurassic World figure. This is a Ceratosaurus figure. And while the coloring is the same as many of the new ones that Mattel is releasing, the design of the whole body and especially its face is very different compared to what's coming out nowadays. Plus, this figure has a button on its side that'll activate sound effects and light up as well. But since it's so old, it no longer works anymore, sadly. From Jurassic Park, we've got a saber tooth looking kind of creature. I don't remember the name of this figure though. But check out those teeth on the very front of its mouth. That's pretty scary. Looks a lot like a saber tooth. Here's another human character from Jurassic Park. I actually don't remember the name of this character, but comment down below if you recognize who it is. Come on. Way down here, we've got a baby Triceratops figure from Jurassic Park. This figure actually came in a shell that you opened up to reveal this dinosaur. And the coolest part is that this figure has marble eyes. You don't see that in a lot of new figures nowadays. Speaking of Triceratops, I've got a wild looking one from Jurassic World. This is a hybrid Triceratops, I believe with a Stegosaurus. It's got gold and some bright blue all over its body. And you can use the tail to move the head around too. Check out all those horns along its head too. That is amazing and a way lot more than normal Triceratops figures. Next up, we've got another raptor figure, but this one is a Velociraptor from Jurassic World. With this figure, you can move its arms and its legs up and down, but you can't open and close its mouth or move its tail. So Jurassic World figures have really come a long way since they first started releasing these. This is a pretty basic figure. Here's another figure that looks nothing like the new figures that they're releasing for this species. This is a Spinosaurus figure. It's got the green and gray and looks absolutely different from the new Spinosauruses that Mattel is releasing nowadays. This bright figure from Jurassic World, I believe is an Allosaurus figure and it's pretty basic, but like that smaller Indominus Rex figure that we saw earlier, you can use its tail to open and close its mouth and even have it look around too. From Jurassic Park, here is another Triceratops figure, but this one is a lot smaller and might be a baby Triceratops. Plus, when you wiggle the leg on this figure, you can move its head up and down too. And unlike many of the other Jurassic Park figures, this figure is all hard plastic. Next from Jurassic World is another old Indominus Rex figure, but this figure has the coolest battle damage feature of them all. You can actually open and close the door to reveal the battle damage inside. And that's not all. This figure can open and close its mouth using the tail as well. Up next from Jurassic Park is a vintage T-Rex figure. I believe a baby T-Rex with a broken leg feature. This is another crazy looking dinosaur from Jurassic Park. This is an Amargo Spinus. You don't see that many dinosaur figures with this type of coloring nowadays. And it's got some pretty cool features. You can pull the leg and all the spines on its back and its neck and even its mouth opens up too. Next up is a giant Jurassic World Dilophosaurus figure. This one even has the battle damage on the side that you can press for sound effects, but it doesn't work anymore, sadly. And it has these giant frills in the front too, which is pretty neat. Next, we've got another Jurassic Park human figure. And I can't remember the name of this figure either, so let me know in the comments if you recognize who this is. Bingo! And here we've got a tiny little Jurassic World T-Rex figure with the green coloring and the tail that controls the neck and the head. This first figure, however, is not from Dino Trackers. This is actually part of the 30th anniversary Jurassic Park collection. This is the real feel T-Rex figure designed to look like the old Jurassic Park one. The skin on its body is soft and rubbery and it actually can eat smaller dinosaurs and store them in its stomach compartment. Next up is the Dino Trackers Endoraptor figure. This version is slightly larger than many of my other Endoraptor figures and it has some roaring actions with its arms. And it has an action button on its back too. 
here is the epic attack Carnotaurus figure. It's around the same size as many of my other Carnotaurus figures, and it features the red body with the brown top and a single action button on its back to operate its jaw. But best of all, there's these action buttons on its side for more sound effects and lights too. Here is the Dino Tracker's Diabloceratops figure. It comes in the bright red coloring over all its body and has some massive horns, and it has an action on its back to swing its head back and forth. Next up is the Dino Tracker's Sino Tyrannus figure. It comes with this cool headset that you can take off of the dinosaur figure, and it has some pretty cool coloring, and it has two buttons. One activates its head, and the other button activates its tail. Right over here is the Dino Tracker's Eocarcharia. This dinosaur has feather texturing over all its body. It's got some pretty bright coloring and the bright red along its face and an action on its back to swing its head back and forth. This is the gigantic Tracker's Stegosaurus figure. It has some really cool coloring over all of its body. It's quite different from all the other Stegosaurus figures that I have. And of course it comes with the Tracker backpack and two action buttons on its back. One swings its tail up and down and the other swings it side to side. Here is the Dino Tracker's Nigersaurus figure. This dinosaur stands on all four legs and has some pretty bright green on the front and darker green in the back. And there's one single action button on its back to move its head back and forth. Here's our first aquatic dinosaur of the collection. This is the Chronosaurus. It has the dark blue top and the yellow underbelly, and you can adjust all its fins and its tail too. And it has a single action on its back to operate its jaw. Next up is the Edaphosaurus figure. It looks pretty similar to a Dimetrodon with a huge spine on its back and standing on all four legs, but its spine is even a bit larger than a Dimetrodon's. And with this figure, you can use the tail to move the head back and forth. All right, now it's time for some ones that I haven't even opened up yet. This is the Orcoraptor figure. This is a pretty bulky looking figure. You can see that it has some feather texturing along the underside of its body, but not really along the top. You can tell that it's kind of a skin texture. And kind of like the Therizinosaurus, it has these huge claws on its hands. It's got some pretty bright accenting design on its tail, but not really anywhere else, which is interesting. But there is some right around its eyes too. And it looks like the arms, the legs, and the tail are adjustable. And there's an action button on its back to operate its jaw. Next up of the unopened figures is this Irritator figure. I think I have one or two other Irritator figures, so I'm excited to add this to my collection. All right, here it is. And I gotta say, it looks even a bit different compared to my other Irritator figures. Its legs seem to be a lot shorter, whereas its body is super long. It has this really long tail. And of course, it still has the spine that runs from its back down its tail and it has some pretty cool coloring too, with the dark brown in the back and on its legs, the orange in the middle, and then some bright green along its head and its neck too. And it looks like its arms and its legs and its tail are adjustable. And there's that single action button on its back to operate its jaw. <laughs> And the next unopened figure is this Regalus Ceratops. Let's go ahead and open it up and check it out. So obviously it looks quite a bit like a Triceratops. It stands on all four legs. It's got the horns on the front, as well as these additional horns along the top of its frill. And it's even got some spikes running down its back and its tail too. This is a pretty bright dinosaur as well. Most of it is that yellow color. It has some green along its face and along its back. And it looks like all four legs are adjustable. You can twist the tail around a bit. And it has an action button on its back for roar sound effects. <laughs> Up next is the Dino Tracker's Dryptosaurus figure. It has fairly dark coloring with the dark brown over most of its body and then the green accenting on its arms and on its tail as well. And boy, does this figure have tons of spikes along its body. And there's the action button to control the jaw and the sound effects. <laughs> Over here is the Hammond Collection Baryonyx figure. It features a fully posable body on all of its limbs and has the classic blue coloring with the white stripe and the gray underbelly. 
Here's another Hammond Collection figure. This is the Concavenator. It too has a fully poseable body with all of its limbs, and it features some pretty cool coloring with some bright orange along parts of it, the dark blue, the lighter underbelly, and some cool detailing around its eyes. Here is the Dino Trackers Zunaceratops figure. This version of the Zunaceratops has the brown body with some tan and black along its neck and an action button to activate its head. This next Dino Trackers figure, I believe, is called the Elephrosaurus. It features a bright blue body with some yellow accenting along the side and a darker face with some horns on the top. And it looks like its whole body is adjustable as well. The arms, the legs, the tail, the neck, and the jaw. Here is the Dino Trackers Herrerasaurus figure. And this Herrerasaurus looks quite a bit different compared to the older versions by Jurassic World. It features posable arms, legs, and tail and an action button on its back for the chomping. This next figure is the Dino Trackers Austroraptor. This version features the tan body with some brown detailing and some brighter coloring around its head. And overall, it's shaped like a Velociraptor, but the biggest difference is the shape of its head and its jaw. Here is the Dino Trackers Strike Attack Gigant Spinosaurus. This figure looks kind of like a Miragaya with these spines along its back and the huge spikes coming out of its shoulders, but it has a different shaped head and this one has the orange coloring in the front and the tan in the back. Plus it has an action that when you move its head back and forth, it moves its tail too. Next up is the Dino Trackers Strike Attack Dilophosaurus figure. This figure has very muted colors. It only has white, some black as well, and I think that's pretty much it. But it still has this really cool feature that when you move its tail, it activates its frills. <laughs> Now here is the Hammond Collection Dilophosaurus figure. It looks quite a bit different compared to the Strike Attack figure that we just saw. But this figure is actually pretty cool because you can actually remove the frill to reveal just the head by itself. Which apparently is a more realistic look for the Dilophosaurus in real life. Back here is the Hammond Collection Ceratosaurus figure. It features the fully posable body, has some pretty cool coloring, over its whole body, and of course has the little horn on the top of its head. Here is the Dino Trackers Baby Brachiosaurus figure. I have a few other versions of this figure, and this one is in the brown coloring with the tan accenting along its back. Here is the Epic Attack Dilophosaurus figure, a little bit larger than many of my other Dilophosauruses. And interestingly, on this figure, you can't move the frills at all, but there is this action button on its side to activate some sounds and some light effects. Looks like here's another Zunaceratops figure from Dino Trackers. We've seen this one already. This one from Dino Trackers, I believe, is called Geniodectes Cirrus. Features some bright coloring with the yellow that runs from its tail through its underbelly up to its face, and then the brown along the rest of its body. And it has an action button on its back to operate the jaw. Next up is a miniature Hammond Collection Velociraptor figure. It of course is extremely poseable all over its body. It has a single stripe that runs down its entire side, and it's got some cool blue coloring right around its eyes too. And finally, here is the Dino Trackers Strike Attack Atrociraptor figure. This Atrociraptor has some bright yellow along the front and then the back is a dark green color. It's also got some reflective silver coloring right around its eyes and a single action button on its back to operate its head. The first that we're gonna unbox is one that I actually just bought on eBay. This is a Spinosaurus JP39. This looks a lot different from the new Jurassic World Spinosauruses, for sure. You can see it's got a green and gray body. It's still got the big old spine, but the head shape is different. 
and it's quite a bit smaller, but it does have some actions too. You can see you can pull down on the arm for the chomping. You can see some wear and tear throughout the body, but I got it for a pretty good price, so. This T-Rex is an original 1993 Jurassic Park Tyrannosaurus Rex made by Kenner. It's got an all soft body. It's a soft rubber. It's got a green underbelly and a red side with spots. Its legs though are made of hard plastic and then it transitions up to the soft rubber right up here. And with this figure, when you squeeze the stomach, it has a roaring function. It used to have sound effects and it doesn't work too well anymore, but it's a pretty old figure. So what can you expect? Next up, we've got the JP53 Chaos Effect Velociraptorix from Jurassic Park. This is a pretty interesting looking dinosaur. They definitely aren't making any figures that look quite like this anymore. See, it's got these spikes all over its body. It's got these wing-like things and a super long tail with those spikes at the end as well. And you can see that it actually is spring-loaded so that when you move the legs, its neck can move up and down and its arms go up and down too. Next up, we've got a smaller figure. This is the Chasmosaurus mm. JP21. This figure is in decent condition. You can see it's got the tan side, brown underbelly, and the gray top. Plus, it has an action with its leg that when you pull it, it goes into a roaring position. And the sound effects still work, actually. Next up is the Jurassic Park Lost World Tyrannosaurus Rex from 1997. This is the JP28 figure. This once again has the rubber body. It has some pretty cool coloring with yellow, black, and green, blue color, and a light underbelly. And you can see that it actually has the throat tunnel all the way down to its stomach, just like the super colossal figures I have now, but a bit smaller. This figure back here, I believe, is another Lost World Tyrannosaurus from 1997. You can see it's colored way differently. I believe this one was custom colored at some point, but it's got the hard front arms that you can swivel, plastic legs, and then the rest of the body is rubber. And this also has the throat tunnel down to its stomach too. Now, obviously this isn't a dinosaur, but this is still from Jurassic Park. This is the Lost World Humvee Capture Vehicle. See that it's got these things that come down on the side as well as these that go up top. I believe these are for humans to sit inside so that they can see way higher when they're riding way high up on the car. Next up is the 1997 Jurassic Park Lost World Thrasher Tyrannosaurus Rex. This T-Rex has hard plastic legs. The entire leg is made of hard plastic on both sides, as are the arms, but the rest of the body is that soft rubber again. And with this figure, when you move the tail around, it actually swings its head back and forth. Way over here on the edge, we've got a super colossal T-Rex. Now, I actually don't know how old this figure is, but it looks quite a bit different than all the other super colossal T-Rexes that I have. Might have been custom painted, but let's check it out. You can see the battle damage on the side. Plus, it comes with some sound effects when you open the mouth. That's pretty awesome. And just like all the rest of my super colossal figures, it is pretty adjustable. You can move the tail, the legs, the arm, and you can open up its mouth really big. Up next, we've got a Jurassic Park puppet. This thing is pretty old, and I believe it is a Velociraptor. It made it entirely out of rubber, so the whole thing is pretty soft. This is the Jurassic Park Lost World Stegosaurus. JP24. You can see that I don't have the battle damage cover anymore. I'm not sure where that went. But this figure has a harder plastic body and the tail is a softer rubber that swings back and forth. Here is the classic Triceratops from Jurassic Park. This is JP08. See, it's got the battle damage on the side. And just like many of the other figures, it's got a soft rubbery body and a function when you squeeze the stomach, the head goes up and down. Next up is the JP-06 Battle Damage Tyrannosaurus figure. This figure, once again, has a soft rubbery body throughout most, 
except for the feet are hard plastic and the arms. Most of its body is a light tan color with that darker striping on top and it's got a lighter underbelly. And let's check out that battle damage on the side too. You can see the bones and a little bit of underneath the bones too. Next up is the Jurassic Park 3 sound activated stalking raptor. Now the motor doesn't work in this figure, but originally you turn it on and it would be able to walk forwards slowly and stealthily. This figure is hard plastic all over. It's got the light underbelly, the dark brown sides, and a purple color right along the top. This is the Lost World Pteranodon JP-22. This figure is really old and it's a little worn down as you can see. It's got the blue and gold body. Its wings are actually a fabric and there's a button on the top of its body used for flapping its wings. Here's another flying dinosaur. This is JP-48. This, I believe, is an Anki Loranodon. It's got some bright green on the underside and purple on the top. Check out those claws. And there's actually a button on its back that you press and it curls its tail inward. And all in all, this is probably over a foot long from wingtip to wingtip. Next up, we've got JP-63. This is the Jurassic Park Baryonyx. I've actually got another one, another very similar Baryonyx right here. And both of them have an action with the leg. When you move the leg, it moves its head back and forth. Next up is the JP-23 Pachycephalosaurus with a ramming head. Now it's slightly broken because when I press the button, the head will fly off, but that's a pretty cool spring-loaded head ramming action. Here we've got the JP-19 Lost World Parasaurolophus. This dinosaur has some pretty cool coloring with the striping down its back and the red right around its head and neck. And this dinosaur also has an action button. You press on its back and it runs. This is the JP-18 Jurassic Park Velociraptor. This dinosaur has some pretty unique patterns over its body. It's got the striping, but it's also got these dots and on its arms and the neck as well. And it's really quiet because it's an old figure, but it actually does have sound effects. This figure is the Jurassic Park 1994 Utah Raptor. Most of its body is that soft rubber, aside from its legs, which are hard plastic, and its arms. And on this dinosaur, the legs are spring-loaded so that when you press beneath its tail, it'll dip down for a chomp. This is JP-58. This is an Amargo Spinus. This has some pretty cool coloring with the black, tan, and red all over its body. And it has an action with its leg that when you pull it, these spines stand up on its back, on its neck, and it opens its jaw too. This figure is the JP-44 Lost World Triceratops. This is a smaller figure. It's got that dark green coloring. And this figure also has an action when you move the leg, it lifts his head up for a roar. Next up, we've got the JP-02 Dilophosaurus. This is a pretty small figure and you can only move the legs on this one, but this is a classic Jurassic Park figurine. Next up is JP-47. This is an Allosaurus and it actually has battle damage that you can take on and off. Look at those huge pieces that you can take off to see what's underneath. You can take it off the leg as well, see the bone underneath and you can even remove parts of its tail too. That is super cool. Here we've got JP-42. I believe this is a baby T-Rex. It's actually got a broken leg on its right side. It's got that dark coloring on the top and the light brown and tan on the bottom too. I've got some identical JP-06 Velociraptor figures. They've got the brown sides, the dark top, and the light underbelly. This is JP-12. I believe it is called a Lysinops, and it looks kind of like a saber-toothed tiger. Next up, the JP-10 Velociraptor. 
This has a bright red top and a yellow side and a white underbelly. And when you move its legs, it actually opens up its arms. Plus, I've even got some classic figurines. I've got two of the Lost World Ian Malcolm glider action figures. I've got the 1997 Ian Malcolm figure. Come on! And I've got the Alan Grant figurine as well. <laughs> I think I've got a few more human figurines in here. This first one is the Robert Muldoon figurine. Oh boy! This second one, I believe, is Harpoon Harrison. Awesome! And I believe this one is the Jurassic Park Lost World Nick Van Owen. Gotcha! Last but not least, we've got a few teeny tiny figures in here. Can you guess what type of dinosaurs these are? Let me know in the comments below. You may be thinking you haven't seen this one before, and that is because it is custom painted. It is an Irex in a camouflage green color. And check out that super bloody mouth too. Next up of my newest figures, we've got the Dino Tracker Endoraptor figure. And it features some attack slashing actions. And an attack button on its back too. The next new figure is this Wild Roar Eo Carcaria figure. It features the feather texturing all over its body. It's got some bright coloring along its head and a slide lever action for different chomps and sound effects. Next up of these new figures is, I believe, the Chronosaurus. This dinosaur is an aquatic dinosaur, so it has four fins. It's got these huge teeth in its mouth and a slide lever action for some roaring sound effects and chomping motions. Next up, I've got a medium-sized Sino Tyrannus figure from the Dino Tracker series. You can see this huge headpiece, and it also has two action buttons on its back. One moves its jaws, and the other swings its tail. Next up of the new figures is this epic attack Carnotaurus figure. It has the classic orange red coloring all over its body. And the special part is it's got these two action buttons for battle damage and sound effects. And not only that, but it also has a jaw chomping action. Here's an even larger figure. This is the extreme battle damage Allosaurus figure. This is the largest Allosaurus I have, and you can check out that extreme battle damage right there on its side. Plus, it also has an action button on its back for sound effects and chomping. Here's another T-Rex I bet you haven't seen before. That's because this is another custom colored one. This is a battle damage T-Rex. You can see the battle damage turned on and off on its side, and it is custom colored into the camo green. It's really cool. Next up is one that I bought just a couple weeks ago. This is a Scorpio Venator in totally new coloring. It's mostly brown and has some orange detailing running along its neck and its head. And this Scorpio Venator actually came as a pack with this Iguanodon figure. And check it out, they both have an attack button when you press down on its back. I think we all know this next one. This is the Therizinosaurus figure from Jurassic World Dominion. It features these huge claws in its hands, and you can use the tail to swing the torso back and forth, and use the button for an attack action. This dinosaur is the new Diabloceratops from the Dino Tracker series. It is the only Triceratops looking dinosaur that I have that has this bright red coloring and it's got a ginormous frill on the front of its head too. Plus there is a little button on its back for sound effects and attack movements. This next figure is a Tyrannosaurus Rex and this one I got just a week ago and it is custom colored to look way more lifelike. Plus they added a bunch more battle damage. And this is the Terran T-Rex, so it has the button on its back for the tearing action. 
Next, why don't we grab these huge figures way in the back? I can't even show this full one on camera, it's so big. This is the Dreadnoughtus figure, and it is probably one of the largest and longest figures that I have. Just look at the size of this thing. This is crazy. Next up in the back here is another huge one, but not quite as large. This is the Apatosaurus figure, and it too has a pretty long neck and a long tail, and you can still move its head around and open and close its mouth. I think that's a pretty cool detail for how big this figure is. All right, let's see what's next here. This is the Hammond Collection Ceratosaurus. It has the classic coloring for Ceratosauruses, and it features very poseable arms, legs, tail, neck, and of course, the mouth. Here's another Hammond Collection figure. This is the Concavenator. And this figure looks pretty wild. It's got an interesting looking spine coming out of half of its back, and it's got a huge orange tail, and of course, is extremely poseable. Let's keep going with these Hammond Collection figures. This one is the Baryonyx, and just like the others, is super poseable and features the gray coloring with the dark blue on top. This next figure is a bit smaller. This is the Strike Attack Zunaceratops. This, I think, is the second version of the Zunaceratops, and this one features the brown coloring with some tan and black, and it has an action button on its back. Next up is the Edophosaurus figure. This figure reminds me of a Dimetrodon because of the huge spine along its back, but I think this dinosaur spine might be even a little bit larger. And it features an action where you can move the tail to twist the head back and forth. Aww. Over here, I've got the giant Dino Tracker's Stegosaurus figure. It comes with the backpack that I have attached right here, and it has totally different coloring compared to the other Stegosaurus figures that I have. Plus, it features two buttons on its back, both to move its tail. This is the Hammond Collection Ankylosaurus figure. It is quite a bit larger than the other Ankylosaurus figures I've got and is very poseable. You can even open and close its mouth. Here is a Triceratops figure from the Jurassic World Dominion series. It's got the green body with the dark green on its head and the orange right along the front too. Over here is the Irritator Raptor. This one is super brightly colored. It has an interesting spine running down its back and on both sides of its tail. And on this figure, if you press down, you get a chomping action. Here is the Wild Roar Dryptosaurus dinosaur figure. It's got spikes all over its tail, running up its back, up to its head, and it has an action on its back that you can use for chomping actions. This weird looking dinosaur figure is the Siamosaurus. It stands on all four legs and has a dark blue body with a spine on its back, kind of like a Spinosaurus. And on this figure, the tail controls the head and the jaw. We saw one Scorpio Venator earlier that had different coloring. This was the original one. And I believe this one is from Jurassic World Dominion. It has the yellow sides with the dark blue top and the white detailing. And of course, when you press down on its back, you get a chomping action. Here is the Ampelosaurus figure in the orange coloring with the brown on top. And like many other figures, the tail controls the head and the jaw. I've also got a few Ragosaurus figures in here. I believe this one was the earlier version with the brown coloring and the dark blue. And this one is a bit more recent. It's dark blue all over its body and it has the white along its neck and its chin. This is an extremely recent one. This is the Epic Attack Dilophosaurus. This figure is a little bit larger than most of my Dilophosauruses. It has the dark green body and the attack button right here on the side. It's pretty cool that it lights up, but sadly on this figure, you cannot open or close the frills. I think that's a pretty big bummer. Here is the Austroraptor figure. You can tell it looks pretty similar to a Velociraptor, but it has a much longer and narrower snout. Aww. Speaking of raptors, here's another one. This is a Mega Raptor figure. It comes in the red and dark blue coloring, and when you press down on its body, you get a chomp action. This is the Sound Surge Irex figure. It's a lot smaller than many of my Irex figures, but it still has some pretty decent detailing and of course the sound effects. Next up for the new figures, I've got a Nothosaurus dinosaur. This is a pretty long and short dinosaur 
but it's got some gnarly teeth. Check that out. This next figure is the Elephrosaurus dinosaur in the bright blue. It's got some yellow green coloring and it features posable arms, legs, tail, neck, and head too. Next up is the extreme damage, Geniodectes Cirrus. While most of its body is this dark gray coloring, it has bright blue and red on the top of its head. And of course, the battle damage on the side. And here's another Geniodectes Cirrus. This is not the battle damage edition and it has different coloring too. Plus this one has an action button to chomp its jaw. I've got quite a few more extreme damage dinosaurs. This is the Atrociraptor extreme damage version. This Atrociraptor is in the white and dark blue. And of course, check out that battle damage. The next extreme damage dinosaur, I believe is pronounced the Coelurus. It comes in dark green and dark red and the battle damage, of course. The final extreme damage that I have of my new figures is this Pyroraptor. It is in the classic red with black, and of course, there's the battle damage. I've also got a little baby Stegosaurus here, and this one is in the bright green. It's even got some gold around its eyes and the red spines. And finally for my new figures is the Rugops Primus Dinosaur. It has feather texturing all over its body, and you can pose the arms, the legs, the neck, and the jaw. I just bought some Jurassic Park sets off of eBay. The first one is the Alan Grant with double barreled bola launcher from the Jurassic Park new series two. Let's check this out. So there's Dr. Alan Grant. Come on. We've got a variety of tools here as well as a little dinosaur. And way up at the top here, you can see that it's some type of claw contraption or something used for trapping dinosaurs, it looks like. Now, I'm not gonna open this up because this is a collectible and I wanna keep it in this condition since it's unopened right now. But I still have another figure from eBay that I just bought that we're gonna check out as well. This is the Compstagnanthus, or at least I think that's how you pronounce it, codenamed Lasher from Jurassic Park Chaos Effect series. And this dinosaur is super colorful. It's got some light blue-green over its body with the black. It's got some yellow. It's got some orange. It's got blue right on its nose. So this will be super cool to add to my collection too. And as you can see, it is a combination dinosaur of a Compsognathus, a Stegosaurus, and an African tree frog. That is pretty wild. As you'll notice with basically all of these figures, these figures are discontinued, so you won't be able to find them new anywhere. You might be able to find them on eBay or something like that. But this first one is a Jurassic Park Allosaurus. And this figure actually has multiple pieces of battle damage that you can completely take off. And this front battle damage actually has multiple layers. You can take off the ribs to see the stomach underneath, and then you can just cover it back up with the skin, just like that. You can also remove the thigh on this dinosaur, see the flesh underneath, as well as on the tail. You can rip off a piece of the tail and see the bone and flesh underneath too. Back here, we've got one of the original Tyrannosaurus Rexes from Jurassic Park. This figure has some pretty unique coloring over its body. It's got the clay red with the black spots and stripes. It's got the lighter underbelly. It originally had sound effects and its whole body is a soft rubber, which is a common theme with the older figures. Right here, we've got a T-Rex from Jurassic Park, The Lost World. This is the Thrasher Tyrannosaurus Rex, and it also has a soft rubber body aside from the arms and the legs. And with this T-Rex, you can actually wiggle the tail to control the face and the neck. Move it back and forth. All right, I know you've been keeping your eye on these huge T-Rexes on the side. This super colossal T-Rex is one of a kind, and that is because it is actually custom colored. It's got a light tan body all around. It's got some interesting shadowing and detail all over. It's also got some super dark red eyes and some interestingly colored teeth too. So those are darker teeth than what's normal. So while you may be able to get a super colossal T-Rex, you will not be able to buy one that is this color. 
Next up for the one of a kind super colossal dinosaurs is this T-Rex. And this has some of the craziest custom coloring out of any figures that I've seen. It looks like a fire T-Rex. Got the bright red over its belly and sides. It's got the glowing orange right next to the black and then the black top. This is a super cool one of a kind T-Rex. And for our final one of a kind custom colored super colossal dinosaurs is this Velociraptor. This I think has some of the best custom coloring out of any figure that I have. It is so detailed and so well done. It's got the black body with these brown stripes and there's even these little gold specks along its brown stripes as well. My favorite part though are the eyes. These are incredibly detailed. It's like gold eye, but then it's got red towards the center and then the black pupil. You will not be able to find another super colossal Velociraptor with this coloring anywhere. Here we've got a Jurassic Park Stegosaurus with battle damage right on the shoulder. This figure has a somewhat soft rubber body. The tail is especially rubbery, so you can swing that back and forth with those spikes at the end. And it has a very natural green and brown and light tan coloring all over its body. So it really blends into the jungle. This giant T-Rex, I believe, is the Jurassic Park Lost World Bull Tyrannosaurus Rex. This T-Rex has some pretty unique coloring with this green-blue color on the sides. It's got some light brown on its legs as well as along the top of its body. It's got some marble eyes that are green. And I don't have the piece anymore, unfortunately, but originally it was able to swallow, I think, a cage that had a man inside. So this thing could actually swallow humans or dinosaurs or whatever you want and you can release it from the stomach right in there. Next up of my rarest figures is this Jurassic Park Lost World Pteranodon that was nicknamed the Steel Beak. This figure's pretty old and fragile now, but it's one of the few figures that has a fabric wing on it, as well as spring-loaded joints for the wings, so it can swing forward and it swings back just like that. Next up is the Jurassic Park Lost World Parasaurolophus. This figure's in pretty good condition for how old it is. It's got the light tan body with the darker brown stripes along the top. And this figure actually has an action button on its back used for running. Here we've got the original Jurassic Park Triceratops. And this figure has some huge battle damage on its side. You can see some flesh and some bone in it as well. This figure also has the soft rubbery body like many of the super old figures, and it has an action that when you squeeze its stomach, it swings its head upward. Here is a dinosaur figure that, although it's more recent, it's still pretty hard to find and pretty rare. This is an extreme chomping Spinosaurus from Jurassic World. This figure has the dark ground body with the light underbelly and the red spine and face. And of course, it comes with the button at the top of its head for the chomping. Right here is another one of the original Jurassic Park Tyrannosaurus Rexes. This is a smaller figure. It probably only stands about nine or 10 inches tall. It's got some battle damage on the side and it has the soft rubbery body all throughout aside from its arms and its legs. This super bright dinosaur, I believe, is from Jurassic Park The Lost World and is actually a Chaos Effect Ankyloranodon. This figure has some super bright colors, with the bright green and the bright purple, plus it's got a super bright orange eye as well. And there's actually a hidden action button on its back to use to move its tail. Over here is another more recent figure from Jurassic World, but is still pretty rare and pretty hard to find. This is the hybrid Indominus Rex. It's got the bright red over its body, it's got some gold, and the classic gray color for the Indominus Rex. Plus it has a few action buttons, the first that you press down to stick out its spines, and the second to pull down the arm, and it roars. Check this one out. Here is another discontinued Jurassic World figure. This figure is fairly rare and is actually a hybrid Tyrannosaurus Rex. Check out these spines that pop out on the top of its head and on its back. 
Plus, another unique feature about this Tyrannosaurus Rex is this unique coloring right along the side of its body. And the action button that springs out the spines also activates the jaw. This is another chaos effect dinosaur from Jurassic Park. This is the Velociraptorix. And this dinosaur has some really unique features. What stands out the most to me are these wings right on the Velociraptor's arms. That's super interesting. And it's got these spikes right along the top of its back and its head as well. And this Velociraptorix has an action that when you pull the leg, it swings its arms up and down and its head moves as well. Next up, we've got another figure from Jurassic World. This is a hybrid special edition Ankylosaurus. And the most special part about this figure is that it actually has part of its shell that you can take off to reveal the normal shell underneath. This removable shell is super bright and reflective. It's got some bright green and purple in the spikes as well. And you can just plop it right back on. Next up in my rare figures, we've got the Jurassic Park Amargo Spinus. I think this figure looks somewhat similar to the unopened figure that we saw at the very beginning of this video. It's got the long neck, it's got the spines all over, and it's got a few action buttons actually that when you move the leg, it actually sticks up its spines on its back, on its neck, and it opens its jaws too. Next up is the Jurassic Park Lost World Chasmosaurus. This figure looks similar to a Triceratops. It's got many of the same features. It's got the horns in the front. And this figure also has an action that when you pull its leg, it moves its head up and down. This is another Jurassic World hybrid figure. This, I believe, is a hybrid between a Stegosaurus and a Triceratops. But it's also got some super bright and unique coloring with the bright blue on its side, the dark blue on its legs, and the gold right along the top and its horns, too. Here is another Jurassic World hybrid figure. This is a hybrid between a Tyrannosaurus Rex and a Dilophosaurus. And once again, it's also got some super bright coloring with the bright orange on its sides. It's got some gold along the top too. This is a Jurassic Park Spinosaurus. And let me tell you, I think it looks a lot different than the Spinosauruses that Jurassic World is releasing now. But it's still got the huge spine along its back, of course, and it has some pretty bright coloring. It's got the bright green along its body with the gray as well. Next up is a fairly large figure from Jurassic Park. This is a Utah Raptor. It's got the orange body with the black detailing along the top and the lighter underbelly. And a nice detail on this figure is that you can actually move the claw up and down on its feet. Over here, we've got a few Jurassic Park Baryonyx figures. These are quite a bit different than the new Jurassic World Baryonyxes that are being released now. Their bodies are a lot more thin. They've got shorter legs, and it looks like they've got longer necks too. Next up, we've got two Velociraptors from Jurassic Park with different features. This first one is a lot smaller and you can move the arms and the legs, but there's no action button. But on this second Velociraptor figure, there's an action button that when you move the leg, you can hear a sound effect. It's really quiet, so you probably can't hear it on the camera, but its head also used to move up and down as well. Here are some other interesting dinosaurs from Jurassic World. This is a Dilophosaurus with battle damage on the side, and it is super brightly colored. We've also got a smaller Spinosaurus with battle damage on the side that you can control by moving the tail around too. And for the last two dinosaurs of my rare collection, first we've got a Jurassic Park baby T-Rex with a broken leg feature. And we've also got this, I think it might be a Baryonyx, it might be an Allosaurus, it's kind of hard to tell, but it's from Jurassic World, and it's got the battle damage on the side, and the tail controls the head too. The first unusual species is this Eo Carcharia figure from the new Dino Tracker series. It's got a fantastic feathering texture over its whole body and a single lever action on its back for the chomping and roaring. 
Next up is the mighty Yang Chuanasaurus figure. This has the green and brown coloring, and you can use the tail to control the head and open and close the jaw. Here is the Irritator Dinosaur, and I think it's from the Dino Tracker series. This figure has some really cool coloring, and that same action button on its back for the chomping and roaring. <laughs> Next up is this huge Quetzalcoatlus figure. If you're a big fan of the movies, you might remember this species in the Jurassic World Dominion movie. And it's got one button on its back for flapping its wings and another button for moving its neck up and down and opening and closing its jaws. Right over here, I've got the Siamosaurus figure. This dinosaur walks on all four legs and you can use the tail to move the head around and open and close the jaw. Next is a little bit of an older figure. This is a Concavenator figure. It's got this huge hump on its back that's red and purple and its entire face is purple and there's an action button on its back for a chomping action and you can press on its spike to swing its tail back and forth this aquatic dinosaur is called the elasmosaurus it's got a soft blue body which i bet camouflages really well in the water and it has two action buttons on its back one swings its neck side to side and the other moves its neck up and down here is the Proceratosaurus figure. This is the basic edition, so you can move its tail, its legs, and its arm, but sadly there is no action button. Still has some pretty cool coloring though. Next up is the Sukumimus figure. This version is in the yellow and brown, and it has two buttons on its back, one for chomping its jaw, and the other for swinging its tail. And I've actually got the other Sukumimus figure in here. This one is in the blue and yellow coloring. And this figure actually only has one action button, and that is for the chomping action. Check out this crazy looking figure. This is a Diabloceratops from the new Dino Tracker series. It's got the all red body, some gigantic horns on its head. It's got some sound effects and the lever on its back for the action. Here's a slightly smaller dinosaur, but still pretty scary looking. This is the Majingasaurus dinosaur with the green, yellow, and blue coloring. And while you have to open and close its mouth manually on this figure, you can still use the tail to control the neck and the head. This next figure is from the new Dino Tracker series. This is the Orca Raptor figure. It has some feather texturing on part of its body. It also has these massive claws on its front arms. And just like all the other Dino Tracker figures, has this lever on its back for the roaring and the chomping action. Next up, I've got an Albertosaurus figure in the green and orange coloring. And with this figure, you can move the tail around to twist the neck back and forth and to chomp the jaw. This next uncommon species is a crazy looking carnivore figure. This is a Tarbosaurus. Check out that red underneath its chin and all these huge spikes running down its back. Plus, you can use the tail to twist the neck around and open and close the jaw. This next figure is also quite large. This species is called a Siats Micorerum. It has the orange coloring on the sides and underbelly and the dark blue on top with all these rows of spikes on its head and on its back. And of course, its special feature is that you can use the tail to twist the neck around and open and close its jaw. Check out those really cool teeth. Next up is an herbivore figure. This is a Cynoceratops figure. And this version comes in the soft green coloring with some tan detailing and dark orange. And with this Cynoceratops figure, you can use the tail to move its head around in all sorts of directions. Check it out, it's another herbivore figure. This uncommon species is called an Oranosaurus. It has a huge spine running along the top of its back and some really cool coloring. It's got the green on its body, bright yellow, orange, and even some blue on its face. And it has this action button on its side for moving its head and sound effects. Right over here, I've got the Ampelosaurus figure. Now this one is a bit older of a figure, but it's still pretty uncommon of a species. And it has two action buttons on its back. The first moves its head up and down, and the second button activates its tail for swinging back and forth. All right, here's another carnivore. This is a Cryolophosaurus figure, and this version is the yellow one with the brown coloring and the huge crown on the top of its head. And with this figure, although you have to open and close its mouth manually, you can still use the tail to move its neck around. This next four-legged dinosaur is called a Nigersaurus. It's got the two tones of green on its body. And since it's from the Dino Tracker series, it has this special feature button on its back used for moving its head in all sorts of directions. This next uncommon species is called a Dryptosaurus figure, also from the new Dino Tracker series. It's got more dark coloring over most of its body and it's got spikes all over on its head, on its back, and a bunch on its tail as well. And it's got the action button on its back for chomping and sound effects. 
This next figure is called the Gigant Spinosaurus Dinosaur. It looks kind of like a Stegosaurus because it has those frills on its back, but it also has these huge spines coming out of its shoulder too. And it is actually spring loaded so that when you move the head back and forth, it actually swings the tail back and forth too. Next up, I've got the Piatnitskisaurus. It's got some pretty cool blue coloring over its whole body and also some red, some orange, and some light green. Next up is the Nothosaurus Dinosaur. It's a pretty weird looking species She's got some short legs and a really long neck and narrow snout. Here is the Shringosaurus dinosaur in the yellow and brown coloring. It walks on all four legs and it has this massive pair of horns on the top of its head. Next up is the Austroraptor dinosaur figure. It comes in the tan and brown coloring and has a bit of dark orange along the top of its head and it has a really long and narrow snout. Next up is a Herrerasaurus, which you might have heard before, but this is actually a pretty new figure and looks quite a bit different compared to the old version. Plus, it has an action button on its back for a chomping motion. This is the Geniodecti Cirrus figure. This version comes in the dark brown and yellow coloring, and it also has an action button on its back for opening and closing its jaw. Here is another aquatic dinosaur. This one is called the Tanistrophius figure. It's got some short little legs that you can adjust and a bright blue body. And when you move the tail up and down, it actually swings its neck way down to the bottom. Now here's a crazy looking dinosaur. This uncommon species is called a Scutosaurus. It's got a bright orange body and it walks on all fours and check out these huge horns underneath its chin. I've got a few more winged dinosaurs in here. This species is called Ramphorhynchus. It's got some bright yellow green wings and a bunch of crazy looking teeth in its mouth. This next dinosaur species is called the Zungdaripteris. It's got bright yellow wings and a brown body and you can actually see feather texture all over its wings too. Plus, it's got a pretty unique looking face and jaw. Next up is a Draco Rex figure. This one is colored bright green with some gray striping and check out all those horns on the back of its head. Oh, you know what? I've got another winged dinosaur in here. This one is called the Tapehara. It's got a lot of orange and some green on its body, but the coolest part is this face. Check that out. Plus, there's a button on its back to flap its wings. The next dinosaur is an Elaphrosaurus figure. It comes in the blue coloring with some yellow and dark brown detailing. And check out those huge horns on the top of its head. Here is the extreme battle damage Quilmosaurus figure. It has the light green body with the dark green on top and the bright red chin. And check out that battle damage on the side that you can click on and off. All right, I've got another aquatic dinosaur. This one is called the Plesiosaurus. It's got a dark green body with the white underneath, also to camouflage in the ocean, and a single action button on its back to move its fins. This next uncommon figure is the Masiakasaurus dinosaur. It has the dark red body with the yellow spotting all over, and spotting is pretty unusual for these dinosaur figures, and the single action button on its back for chomping its jaw. This is the Rugops Primus figure. It has some feather texturing over its body and the soft green coloring on its body with the black on its tail and on its face. Here is the Mira Gaia figure. This figure looks quite a bit like a Stegosaurus, but this one also has the huge spikes coming out of its shoulders and a lot more spikes on its tail too. And here is a Pachycephalosaurus figure. I believe this one is from the Legacy Collection. And this figure has a special feature that when you press down on its tail, it has the headbutting action. This little dinosaur here is called a Trudon. It has the pink underbelly and gray on the sides and the black spine and the black along the top of its head too. Next up is the Protoceratops figure. There's a few versions of this and this one is in the bright green with yellow accenting. This figure I believe is called the Sauropelta. It has some huge spikes coming out of its shoulders and is actually spring loaded so you can swing its shoulders back and forth with those huge spikes. Here's a crazy looking figure. This is actually a hybrid dinosaur from the first Jurassic World movie. This is a Triceratops and Stegosaurus hybrid. Check out that battle damage right on the side too. And it even has an action button. When you press down its tail, you get a stabbing action with its head. And last of all, I've got the Zunoceratops figure. This is a newer version that is in the brown coloring with the tan and black on its face. And it has a single action button for a stabbing action.
Want to see more dino videos? Click the subscribe button now.